Good morning, Diesel Nation. All right, it's follow-up Friday. Let's talk about this because I want to first hone in on actionable steps that we can take on follow-up Friday, then also talk about the tools that you can use to help you take action. And then lastly, the mindset to always go into as you're doing follow-ups. Let's first start with the actionable steps. Fran on Wednesday, when she gave you guys like killer, if you haven't caught it yet, killer social media training. She also talked about Ten and Play on the process that she keeps to keep track of the prospects and the conversations that she's having, right? Because you want to have this funnel system, but you want to make sure at the end that that funnel system is working for you and you have a way to keep track of your business. This is where Ten and Play comes into effect. And I've been using this in my business for years upon years. And I can transport myself back to the beginning of my business on how it alleviated so much pressure. The idea of getting out there and having a hundred conversations scared the shit out of me. But if I could say, okay, 10, 10 conversations that I'm having that are quality over quantity conversations that I'm having. And this list that I could go back to every time I was going to what I call hit the list and follow up that I could do. Right. And where I'm at 13 years later now in my business, my list isn't just 10, right? Now it's 20, 30, sometimes 40 names long, but that's because I've created already a system, right? I've created confidence. I flex that muscle that my list has grown. But in the beginning, 10, I could, I could bite off and chew on 10 conversations. And that's how we eat an elephant, right? We take one bite at a time. So that's the whole concept behind 10 and play. And I wanna kind of dive into exactly what that looks like and how I keep my 10 and play. Uh, because I think that, that some people are confused on that or maybe are making it more difficult than what it actually is. You can choose. Some of us are pen and paper gals and some of us are really good with you know using technology whether it's spreadsheets like oh i can't do spreadsheets but um either you're the notes section of your phone so that it goes everywhere you go or again pen and paper you carry around a notebook you get to choose but 10 and play to me means i'm keeping track of the conversations i'm having the solid conversations that went from what what is it that you're doing i want to know more right once that happens, this person's going into my 10 and play. Um, my 10 and play, the way that I, like the information that I keep on it is first and foremost, obviously the name of the person. Um, I dated also. So I have an idea of when this conversation started the source, whether it was from Instagram, whether it's from Facebook, whether it was in real life, right? Whatever it was that I met this person, I make sure to jot that down because as you're having more and more conversations, you, it could slip your mind, right? what it is that they need. So this comes to asking really important questions. When someone comes to me and says, okay, what's this thing you're doing? Are they swipe or they fill out an application or whatever it is? My knee jerk reaction when I first started was to like vomit all the things, but I have learned to slow down to speed up, to kind of gain ammunition, so to speak, so that when I, when I get to that point of telling them what I have to offer, if there's any kind of objection or rebuttal, I kind of have, I know what I'm dealing with and I could say, well, this is why I think this, or you express this to me. So this is where I know this can help you. Um, but taking the time to ask questions and the right quality questions um, has made a difference also, because then what I do is I get the answers to those questions and I plug them into my 10 and play document or my notebook, right? This person's postpartum. Uh, she works long hours. She's a nurse. She feels like she has no time in her day. She uh, could really, really use a morning routine, right? So all these kinds of little things, it just depends on what the person needs. And then the last thing is I always keep notes on the conversation. I date every conversation I have. I date every follow-up that I do. Um, Anything that's going to help me remember, because again, I'm here 13 years later, right? I've had so many conversations. I've met so many new people. And unless I got really systematic about it and really organized about it, chances are things were falling through the cracks, right? So this is what my 10 and playlist looks like. This simple. And here's a couple things about my 10 and playlist. There's only two ways someone gets off my list. Number one, they, they purchase, they join me, right? Now I'm grabbing them, I'm taking them off my tenant playlist and I'm plugging them into my onboarding system, right? And that's another conversation that we can have later. But they're getting off my tenant play and now going into onboarding because they join me. 
the second way that someone comes off my list is that they just have to write to me or say to me, Monica, leave me alone. Alone, I am not interested. I never will be. And in all my years, that still has not happened, right? So I've learned that a no, not right now is not always a no. It's a yes later. So often those people come around. But what I always do is I leave that door open and I also keep them on my list. And when I keep them on my list, I also, you know, I just kind of gauge it. You know, if the conversation was, you know, they were really engulfed in the conversation, but it just really isn't a good time for them. Maybe they're stretched financially. Maybe they're, you know, they really want to do this, but it can't happen right now. Or they've got a battle through their their own reasoning, right? I've, I've learned that there's pe- different personalities and there's different um, purchase, like the way that people, consumer behavior, that's the word, consumer behavior. Like some people be like, I need this now, let's go. So other people have to process and marinate and kind of f- do their thing before they say yes. So I always leave it open like, hey, should I follow up with you? You know, okay, maybe this month is not good. Should follow you next month. Or if that person, you know, kind of left it, I'll let you know. What I do is I, again, take really good notes so that when I have my next thing, like for example, Ignite Her 60, I would go back to my list. I would hit my list and say, hey, listen, I know we haven't talked since XYZ, but you shared XYZ with me. I have this thing coming up and I think it would be really great for you. Or this is the place to start. Maybe now's the time. You see how I all of that connects and comes together because of my 10 and play. So that's what 10 and play looks like, okay? So that's the actionable step to take. If right now you've got a 10 and play or you have some kind of um, tracking system, hit the list, follow up Friday, hit the list, right? Um, And if you don't, let's get started on that. That's problem, like homework number one, right? Homework number one. Okay, now let's talk about tools. If you've done the 28 day action plan, which I actually have a group of coaches right now going through through it together. Some of us are, Our veterans have been around, but we're learning this onboarding system because this is the future, right? And then some are brand new partners and it's really exciting to get to see all the tools that they get and and the way that this app is really helping us onboard new partners and get people earning and making sales. Um, But part of that 20 day action plan, day two, like literally day two, they are dropping something called the, I think it was the, the, connecting and step-by-step guide how to literally and I and I and I'm looking at my phone because I literally saved it on to my phone in my notes section this tool and it gives you scripts on starting a conversation gives you scripts on what to do when someone responds it gives you scripts on how to ask for the sale like literally get in there let's make the sale and then what to say when they're interested other things to think about and how follow up is key. And it gives you tips on following up. So if you need a tool right now, you feel lost in the sauce, right? You're getting out of your comfort zone, doing things that you haven't done yet, but you need some help. Use these scripts, use these scripts. And I'll give you the biggest pro tip here is that make them your own. Don't just copy and paste, make them your own. And again, quality over quantity. Quantity will be like just spamming people, just dropping a bunch of stuff. Quality goes one by one, looks at the conversation you had in the past, figures out how could I tailor this to this person, what they need, what they may need to hear from me. How can I get them to understand this is what I have to offer and how I can help and just really take the time to relationship build, right? But this is a tool that you can use. So that's part two, tool. Use a tool if you don't have it. And again, going through the 28 day action plan, this is only on day two. Not only do I have these scripts, guys, I also saved third party, like a, crap ton of third-party tool links that you can also use in your business. Okay. Now mindset, let's go to mindset real quick around following up because it matters the way you enter into any actions that you take in your business. If you're going into this with the mindset of, I'm going to bother people. I'm going to be annoying. They're going to think I'm just trying to make a sale. They're going to think, I mean, X, Y, Z that people that you may go through your head that people are thinking about you. You have got to, if it's not serving you, you have got to let it go. If that is happening to you, you have to stop. First, check yourself and get in the right mindset before entering into it. I don't know about you, but I'm here today because Christina Delgado did not stop following up with me. It didn't take one, did it take two? It took like, I don't know how many times of her following up. If not, I would not be here today. I can think of so many people 
that I have not stopped following up that today are some of the best partners, some of the best challengers that I'm so grateful to have on my path. I also think about myself in all consumer behavior. You know, when it comes to my account, if they don't follow up, I often forget, right? If, you know, where I buy my, my skincare product, they don't remind me, hey, you know, you need product now. You might, you're probably running out. I would forget the follow-up is, is key. Do you know that it is proven in sales? You, the fortune is in the follow-up. You are likely to close a sale 30% more on the follow-up, on the follow-up. And here's a couple of things about the follow-up, like why it's so important. And this is the stuff you got to plug into your brain. Get all the stuff that's not serving you out and replace it with things that are. Following up proves that you're in the relationship building business. You're not here just to make a sale. You're literally looking at someone saying, I thought of you. I haven't forgot about you. I know that you need this. You shared something with me and I took that personally and this is how I can help. No pressure, but I'm here when you need me. You are relationship building. This makes a difference. That can only happen in the follow-up. Think about that for a second. Replace, I'm being annoying and pushy to, I care. This is proving to them that I'm in this with them, that, I, that I'm doing my job as someone that's going to walk them through the process. First, we're going to do it in health and fitness. And second, we can do it in business. But I am someone that is right there, right? Proving that I am in the trenches. We talked about, obviously, it closes deals by 30%. But again, you are also proving to yourself to yourself that you're going to take the bold action. You're going to be that person that is so certain in what you have to offer that you're not afraid if you get a no, not now, because you know what that means. And obviously it creates trust and credibility, right? Trust and cred credibility because you're not going to stop at that first no. Someone who is not really tied to the why of their business and why they're building it and why they believe in it and how they really truly, like nothing can stop them because they know exactly what they want and they know like, I don't know about you, but I don't shut up about my journey, like health and fitness and everything this has to offer because I believe it because it changed me, right? And if that's not happening for you, that's the first gut check to have, right? But if you feel that, you cannot make yourself smaller. You got to get out there and make yourself bigger and pay that forward and remind yourself, man, what a disservice if I turn this off. How many of us would not be here today if someone turned that off? So Hope this helps. And please, guys, uh, below this post, share anything that your best practices, things that are working for you, so that all of us together, collectively, it's the tide that lifts all ships. Hope this was helpful. We'll talk soon.